How's it going, lads? How are you doing this fine morning? We've got another ourselves a game. Another stealth game. Another stealth casted game off stream. And this time it's going to be Mini Malt, who you've seen before, who is... Been playing a lot of China recently, but he is generally considered a China main. I think China and probably Dutch might maybe his two main civs. And uh, one thing I love, I know I explained it a little while ago, and in, in, I think he this was the age two build recently, a few videos ago. Um, he's been playing, he's been playing a lot more recently, and and like I said, he's like a he's just kind of like leading the way with China. Like, like there's not that many China players out there right now. And I know a lot of you guys ask for China games, and there's a few China mains out there. Uh, China mains, and uh, you're not getting the love that you deserve, uh, unfortunately. So, um, you know, it's good to see that Mini is playing them. And, yeah, if I ever get any high-level China games, I like watching them. Uh, because, you know, you don't see them that often. They definitely have fallen off uh, the rails uh, with regards to how often they're played. Um quite a lot off, uh, over the last couple of patches because they've you know they've received a, a lot of a lot of nerfs they've, they've very rarely got any buffs as of late other than like the t export card which was amazing by the way and uh yeah it's been nerf after nerf with with china and uh that's probably why you don't see them as much anymore uh still a great civilization though honestly i feel like they're still definitely up there and can compete against the best uh gonna be picking up 90 food here uh n food if you ever want to get a really good resource, the, the best treasure, generally the best treasure in age one for mo like 90% of the civilizations is food. Just because food generally means you can age up faster, right? Sometimes, yes, wood, because wood can allow you to stop your villagers chopping if you're going for a TP and a house, etc, etc. But generally, food is, is it's just a win-win. It's just a win-win. Like gold, sometimes you're just not going to use gold until you've aged up already. So, yeah, food is, uh, if you want to prioritize a treasure... Always try to prioritize food in age one because it means you can age up faster. Going for a TP here, Mini. And the first card's going to be T export. I'm going to go ahead and say he's probably going to see French export. Sorry, French export. French consulate. And uh, use the export to get the food down. Are we going to see him go for it? We are. We're going to see French allies coming in. And uh, Revnak picking up 95 XP here. He might lose his Explorer, though. And that's that's one of the one things. They kind of have that, uh, like, the, it's, it's the same with uh, with Spain, where they get that extra Disciple. They get that extra kind of support unit at the beginning of the game, uh, which can do a lot of damage. And so that just means they have the advantage in any kind of Explorer versus Explorer game, which is, you know, can be very huge in a lot of games. Like, losing... losing the Germans Explorer at this stage of the game is huge because that means they're not going to get better to get that TP that they so desperately will need um, when they go into A2. And look at that brown plus 45 XP there. Really nice play by Revnak to allow himself to die to the Treasure Guardians as opposed to his opponent uh, because that means that the opponent doesn't get the XP. Uh, aging up now coming in for Mini. Let's have a look at Revnak. Revnak is aging up as well. He's going to start putting all of his Oh, villagers onto wood and he's look at that he's actually had to buy back his explorer that cost a hundred gold wow at this stage of the game you almost never see that you almost never see that and yeah a hundred gold and it's essentially a 200 gold difference because he takes the hundred gold and gives it to his opponent so there's like a, a gap of 200 gold difference when you look at it like that so that is absolutely huge and I would have imagined he would have been using that to build a TP, but he's decided not to. And I would actually have expected Minimal, when he saw that he bought back his Explorer, to go and run and take his Explorer all the way to the TP line just to make sure that he's not building it again and so he could kill it again. But there's the kind of that, that uh, you know, bluff, that double bluff going on right now. And uh, he's now going to make his way to the TP, but he's not going to find anything. And Garbage. now Revnak using his Explorer just to kind of scout what's going on. Yeah, he wanted to see what out, uh, what Wanda was being used, and he sees that. So he probably expects a very standard age two here, like a standard fast fortress. He's now going to go over to the TP line. But Minimal's not going to see anything, but he will do shortly. So what is Revnak deciding to go for here? He's not going to be able to get the TP. I, well, I don't think he's going to go for the TP. So, may Oh, he's just crack-shotted it as well. He's helping Mini. Revnak, you're helping Mini. Oh, no. And that is unfortunate. 
<laughs> he's helped Minnie there uh, get that 300, no, 190 XP, sorry. Um, absolutely huge treasure. And oh my goodness me, we got a corner tower rush coming in here. Does Mini see this? Oh my goodness me, the line of sight doesn't see it. He doesn't even see the settler wagon. Oh, that could be. Oh, what's... oh, oh my goodness me. Mini doesn't see this. Mini does not see this. Alarm bells are ringing. Parcel's going down for Mini Malt. So Mini Malt's not doing a fast fortress here. Two Oolons are going in for it. And now he sees the crossbow mode. It's at this point Mini knows what's going on. He goes, oh my goodness me, I'm actually being tower rushed. And so he knows the tower must be around here somewhere. But he's not prepared for it. He's trying to get a castle down. Uh, he loses a settler. I mean, Red Knight's going to be happy that he's, he's at least gotten a settler at the very least. And uh, settlers, killing settlers at this stage of the game is so crucial. It's so such a huge percentage of your eco. Just one settler. So to lose one is very detrimental. Uh, going for, interesting. So minimal. He's gone for. It looks like he's gone for 700 wood into diplomatic intrigue. And as soon as diplomatic intrigue has come in, he's now going into German consulate. I wonder. I think that'll be for the trickles. A war academy is going down. Now 700 gold. He can make stuff from his castle. Standard army is coming in very shortly from the Summer Palace. Oh, and that's all. That's like two thirds HP. Probably could be sending his Minutemen, but you know, that's unfortunate timing. That's going to go down by itself. And now the Standard Army is not going to be able to do as much damage as it wants. Purely because of those Oolons there. Oh, and the Oolons split the moment he goes in for the attack. That is unfortunate. The TC5, he's got 10 in there. Very nice by Mini. He's got 10 to just try and focus down those Oolons. And the Expos do get cleaned up. So nice defensive play there by Mini Malt. Just using his Explorer as kind of a, a way of buying some time to keep his units there. And uh, Revnat just splitting his Oolons off at the worst possible time. Ouch. Now it's his turn to pick up 190 XP. But are we going to see some counterplay here? Oh, oh, and this is like the worst possible timing. The pikemen are going to have to... Yeah, the pikemen are going to be forced to go, but he doesn't have much. Can't really take down those pikemen. Could try and kill his explorer. But I think he's going to have to just take that on the chin and uh, allow him to get the 190 XP there. But he's going to be able to kill maybe a couple of pikemen. He's very nice, so killing five pikemen here would be nice. Because then it leaves him very vulnerable. There's, it doesn't look like Revmax making many units. Wow, now coming in with seven step riders. Trying to build a wall. And he is trying to age. So he's basically gone for like a very uh, an eight crossbowman into three settlers and then 700 gold. And he's gone for a very standard, like a very safe, a very safe semi FF. Age up is coming in now. He's gonna he might lose a stellar wagon. Oh, he tried to get that wall down. That's what you get for bugging pillarless walls. Settler wagon's gonna go into the outpost, but I don't think it's gonna be long for this world. There's no reinforcing units coming in. There's no shipments coming in. There is nothing right now for Redknack. And he's gonna lose all of his infrastructure, which could be huge. Because don't forget, right now, it looks like Mini is, is mainly building these step step riders. Uh, and his his army is going to be very very movable. Like he's got a lot of stuff. Uh, is he building stand? I don't even know what he's making right now. Mini likes to go for these castles to make the. Uh, I, I can't. I don't even know the names of it. But it's it's like the, the heavy cavalry, not the heavy cavalry, the light cavalry um, batches that you can make. So yeah, but but Mini has got a lot of cab. He likes to do this with China because often what you see with China is just you see standard fast fortress builds. You see the the Changdao, you know, the skirmishers, uh, and then all the other types of shit in the cavalry. But Mini likes to play this out a little bit in Age Two, and he likes to get a lot of step riders. He likes to get these Keshiks as well. So yeah, he likes to get that that army, that really movable army that he can just run around the map. And uh, these guys have a lot of su surprising a lot of siege as well for how cheap they are. Twenty five siege attack. Um, considering they only have 150 HP is huge. So, yeah, likes to make a lot of these step riders and Keshex. 
getting some market techs now. He's also following up with the age up. And he doesn't have to worry about any reinforcing batches coming in here. So he's played this super nicely here. He does still have the German consulate. It looks like he's gone for the trickles. I don't think I can see any doppelsodners. So he hasn't gone for the units. Yeah, so he's gone for the trickles. I presume the food trickle and the wood trickle. He's aging up. What is he aging up? Well, he's going up with the porcelain tower as well. And this bad boy, look at the trickle on this. Jesus Christ. Even an XP trickle as well added on. Basically, Fatorious with, with like four TCs equivalent. 25 export as well. 0.25 export. Really nice. Yeah, really nice play here at the moment. Uh, he's going to see these Ulons. That's a really nice village placement. But unfortunately, he sees it too late. And he's going to lose two villagers for it. But is his batch going to come back? His units need to get back here and kill these Ulons. Ulons sniping two villagers and then running away. If those Ulons get away with that for free, that's going to be huge. And it's, it's the tiny little edges at this stage of the game. Just killing two villagers. Don't forget with the Expos, he killed a villager at the start as well. That's three, that's three villagers so far. It's uh, an out of when you only have 26. That's a lot of that's a lot of eco. That's a lot of eco. So you know this is this is nice play by Revnak here. Let's go have a look at Revnak. See what he's doing. He's on twenty eight vils. He's on more villagers. Plus there's a lot of settler wagons there. There'll be about six yeah. uh, to seven settler wagons. Uh, he did lose a settler wagon though as well. Hello. So an extra seven villagers, but the porcelain tower as well. So with the German consulate trickles, it's very close. Who's got the better eco? Amalgamation coming in now as well. So that's going to put his settler wagons on mines on steroids. Those guys are going to get hench from mining all of that gold right now. Uh, they are going to look very buff as well with Amalgamation coming in. Right. Yeah, it's a really close game right now. Udons are just running around the map, trying to search for stuff, trying to get some cheeky raids in there. Um, and he's just going to be making standard German stuff. He's gone for both resource crates, though. For, so 1k wood and 1k gold. Wow, that's so greedy. He's built a church for his XP. So, so greedy. He's all over every side of the map trying to search some stuff. And if you've got good micro and a good hotkey ability to just constantly keep looking between all of those hot groups, um, that's a very effective way of raiding. But he's not finding anything. He has he, he sees what's going on. He's containing his opponent. Mini, Mini is uh, really on the defense here. And uh, doesn't want to push out. He's a little bit worried about pushing out too much. Udon's getting caught there. He sees where the skirmishes are, so he's constantly finding where all of his units are. He constantly, uh, both Minimal and Revnak, kind of assessing each other where they are, just posturing at this stage of the game, really. And Udon's decided to dive in for it, but um, Minimal's saying, do you know what? I'll call your bluff, Sunshine. If you want to come at me, then let's go for it, big boy. And uh, I'll just smash everything into you. That's what she said. And that's what that's that's what China loved doing. The death ball is here. It's not the usual type of death ball that you see. We see lots of disciplined stats and lots of disciplined Keshiks. And Keshiks are really nice versus Udons. Because the Udons have just got absolutely melted. I did not expect that. There's no war wagons. There's there's no anti-cav here from Revnak. So Revnak calling the bluff really there. And trying to find an opportunity on all the skirmishes. He didn't see all of those Keshiks. And he made a huge mistake there as well, especially considering he's, made, he's he's going to be sending in Black Riders. And being that aggressive, when you know you're going to be going for a mercenary shipment next, whether it be Jaegers or Black Riders, huge mistake. Huge mistake. Because if Black Riders were in that fight right there, it would have been over. Right? All he needed to do was wait for those Black Riders, but decided to, to try, and, try and go for it. And uh, just unfortunately made the wrong decision there. Now, uh, interesting, we've got a little bit of a... What's the scores? A bit of a stalemate right now. Both sides, again, even though that was a great fight for Mini, the scores are very close. Although that's... Uh, it feels like China sometimes underscores, so uh, that's kind of good for China if they're on the same score. But the Black Riders are in. Now he's going on the offense. Escape me a best Is he going to find what he wants? That's a decent mass of skirmishers and crossbows. Oh, I really nice. don't think Revnak has the superior skirmisher mass that he thinks he does. 
And I'll tell you what I'm going to do as we're talking. I'm going to put a label background on here just so the timer doesn't spoil it for you guys. And, uh... Yeah, this is a close one. This is a super close one. I really, really can't call this. Revnak's starting to get those pillarless walls down. He wants to start taking the map. Start just kind of making the mic giving him the micro advantage the line of sight advantage and that's exactly why you do this with all the walls and pillarless walls is the best way of doing that because they're so cheap just gonna give him any little advantage that he can minimal is slightly ahead though but bang look at that nine udons coming in this is this is the pain chain from germany right now and uh revenant considers him the best get the best civilization in the game can minimal prove him wrong Nine Udons are going to come in and that's going to give so much tempo. But look at this massive from Mini. I've got to keep looking at Mini because just look at this Discipline Chukanu. Canoe. Who does that? Who, who uses Discipline Chukanu Canoe in a 1v1 supremacy match? I, I, I know. I said it. I honestly, I honestly, honestly cannot tell you the last time I saw that. I didn't even know that's what it looked like because I'm, I don't think I've ever used Discipline Chukanus. Canoes. Like, I... Uh, mini man, it's just a mini mult. Mini mult, do mini like mini mult knows this civilization so well. He knows this civilization so well, and he plays it like no other plays it. And look, look at these little cute guys. Look, oh, look at them with their disciplined pajamas on. It's so cute. And uh, I'm not sure why you would go for disciplined two canoes when you only had about. He didn't even have ten of them, did he? Um, <laughs> seems like a waste of resources to me, but. Hey, man, you do you, Mini. And again, Revnak just searching, hunting. Going to be seeing what's going on over here. Does see that village. Does see that dead zebra as well. I just realized I said zebra is in the American version, not zebra is in the English version. And that's... Uh, I'm going to have to whip myself and give myself some lashes there for um, that. God save the king. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, look at this kind of like little fortress, this little play that Revnak's trying to do here. He's trying to go for gates, but Mini's having none of it, and he's just going to find the weak spot of where these walls are, and he's just going to go for it. There's Black Riders in there. They do have a strong melee resist, so they're going to survive. Udon's getting stuck. There's just so much mass there from China. But these walls, are they going to be able to save them these gates? And this is exactly why he do it, because now, look, he's completely cut off most of the mass from China there, and China's going to be forced to back up there. Because of these gates. And it's just gates after gates after gates. He spent about 300 wood. No, 400 wood just on gates. Now it's just uh, discipline archibruisers versus skirmishers. And skirmishers do win out on that fight. And again, that's thanks to these gates. He can't get the reinforcements in there. There's Manchu in there. There's, there's, there's discipline step. There's uh, meteor hammers. There's just a bit of every type of cavalry in there. And... That's, that's actually really effective. Like it, it makes microing that a living nightmare. But like how do you micro every type of cab that China has? It's almost impossible, right? You can't use Oolong. So you, you just have to constantly be in a perpetual state of kiting, which you know is, is almost impossible if they get a snare on you. So it's just a really nice play by Mini. Just playing this really, really well. Just, you know, just every type of unit that China have. Look at these reinforcements. Look at these reinforcements. Like consulate units, cav units, uh, Changdao, Skirm. He's just making every type of unit. 39 vils to compared to 31. Plus we've got lots of um, uh, settler wagons as well. So the village count really in favour of Revnak. But don't forget this porcelain tower and all the other triples that he's got from the German consulate. What consulate are we on now? We're on the brick consulates again. Because why not? Another town centre going down for Mini. And look at the size of this mass. Look at the amount of units that are here as well. Even his double cousin is involved in there. And look, this guy has over a 1,000 HP. And when you've got these big fights, that just takes up so much. So it soaks up. It's like a sponge. It's damage soaker in the middle of a big fight. It always can be the big difference. And look, he's even raiding as well now as well. A nice quick wall there by Revnak. And he's going to build a gate, I presume, just to try and run these settlers through. He is... And that might save them for the time being. Is it going to allow him to get over there to save the rest of those villagers? That's a nice quick wall there. Oh, but he doesn't quite build it all the way. 
And these cavalry are going to be able to just slip through the side. Oh, but Redneck allowing a big batch of cavalry to a full batch of... of... Oh, my goodness me. I didn't even see this genocide that's going on over here. Oh, they're all women as well. Oh, minimal. Think of the children. Oh, my goodness me. What a raid. He's going to be cleaning up here as well. He's not forgetting about that. It's just this This is the level of pro micro. This is constantly micro going on every side of the map. He's just got hotkeys for everything. And uh, Revnak, oh, just going to allow his Black Riders to go down there. But uh, most of them should survive. And, oh, my God. Look, look, this, this, that's the power. Look, 40% range resist. So insane. And now the score's looking really good for Mini Molts China. And look at this. Look at these cards. Yeah, he got that Baying Army in. And uh, he likes to use that Baying Army. And oh my goodness, but there's just so much units here. And this is this is like this is a death wall for China. But this is uh an insane death wall. Like look, I just There's disciples, Cav, Chang Dao. Uh, still got repentant Manchus in there, he's got red coats, he's got skirms. Like, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? Like, I, I don't know how you deal with that. You need like an insane amount of doppelsodners, maybe? Like, you need a big meat shield of something. Just two more shipments coming in. Ten Chang down intervention. That's going to give him some red coats. Oh, my goodness me. I, I just... It, this is insane. Going down for a third TC now by Mini. And, oh, my goodness me. Somehow catching a big snare over here. And Revnak's going to try his damn hardest to get through these gates. But the longer the game goes on, he's almost 10k score. And I think we'll see a GG called very shortly. Skirm be skirm action. Mini might split his army here. I think he is. Yeah, very clever. Splitting his army. And bang, look at that. He, he can afford to do it. He knows he can afford to do it. He's that far in front. He wants Redman to stop playing silly buggers. And uh, I think he's done it. And there's the GG. Minimo showing some insane semi semi FF H2 Cav Step Rider. But I don't even know. I don't even know what that was. But I enjoyed the ride. So thank you very much, Mini. I paid my ticket. I enjoyed the ride. And you beat rank number one in the game. Uh, playing as, aka, in his opinion, the best civilization in the game. And China. Wow, just, just shitting all over that. And uh, really impressive play by Mini. And, uh, you know, it's, it is... You, like, you wonder if killing that explorer in age one, killing Germany's explorer in age one, did that make the difference between him then saying, do you know what, I can't go for a TP now, so I'm going to instead go for uh, an outpost rush, a tower rush. Like, so it's little things like that. And then shipping the 100 gold, giving him 100 gold just to buy back the Explorer. Like, that's that's why China are so good. Because they have that that bully in Age 1 uh, and the Disciple. Just to be able to bully his, his opponent's Explorers. And, uh, yeah, really, really well played. They have to look at villager population to make that fair. So, Eco was looking pretty good for Revnak at one point. But, yeah, look at the resources. It was It was looking good. I mean, it was very close. But uh, in the end, Minimalt won. And uh, that porcelain tower just going, brrr, just pumping out resources the entire game. And uh, what a great game. What a great game. Mini, let's look at his deck one last time. You know, using that Bayang army. Uh, unit shipment after unit shipment. It looked like, you know, Manchus was one of his first cards. And yeah, really impressive play by the China player. Minimalt, the China main. Hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. And I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Peace.